Welcome to the class of 2024 ninth grade transition meeting. We are excited that you have joined us and we hope that this presentation is helpful. I am Susan Langen, one of the high school counselors and I will introduce the other counselors and they will also be sharing information during this presentation. This presentation will include information for the class of 2024 and their parents and guardians about graduation requirements, course selection for next year, and also the forms that your student will receive. We will also share where to find all of the information you need to make a, tran a successful transition. At the end of the presentation, we've also included a video highlighting all of our elective class opportunities, such as art, music, business, and the many area other areas available. Please watch this video and find out all the possibilities available at the high school. We do understand that there is a lot of information we would like to share with you, and it can be a bit overwhelming. This year, we have added a web page called Cedar Falls High School Course Information. This page will include information also from the school counseling department, including all the presentations, forms, and timelines. Each page also will include information from each department at the high school. Each department will share their courses that they offer and anything else that they thought would be helpful to you in making your decision about what classes to take next year and in the future. Because even though we are asking you to focus on the 10th grade year, it is important to keep in mind the 11th and 12th grade year in your planning. This page will be available on the Cedar Falls High School web page, the Cedar Falls High School Counseling web page, and other social media outlets. So please check it out and find everything you will need to know. Now I would like to introduce the rest of our high school counseling team. The high school counselors do divide up by alphabet just as similar, uh, just as it is in the junior highs. We are very excited to meet our students in the class of 2024. So if your last name starts with A through F, you will have Aaron Gardner as your counselor. If your last name starts with G through L, you will have Andrew Eisenman as your counselor. If your last name starts from, with M through R, you will have me, Susan Langen, as your counselor. And if your last name starts with S through Z, you will have Carrie Deacon as your counselor. I would also like to introduce Chris Wood, who is a part-time career and college counselor. And one other person in our office is Tracy Havilana, our counseling secretary. We do like to start our presentations with what we do as school counselors. We work with all students in three different domains. The first one is academic development, making sure all students are successful in their classes and meeting graduation requirements. The sec second area is social emotional development, which is supporting our students and helping them with problem solving, relationships, decision making, and other similar areas. As in the junior highs, we have also uh, we also have mental health counselors available to our students from Blackhawk Grundy Mental Health. The last area that we work with our students is career and college development, making sure each student, when they walk across the stage on May 26, 2024, to receive their diploma, will have a graduation story that they are prepared for and excited to pursue. This slide includes the timeline for our registration and scheduling process. As you see on the slide, the high school counselors will be going to Pete on Tuesday, February 2nd, Holmes on Wednesday, February 3rd, and we will also be meeting with the virtual ninth graders by Zoom on Friday, February 5th. We will have a live question and answer Zoom session on Thursday, February 4th, from four to six for parents, guardians, and students. A link will be provided to you before the meeting. And included in this email is a form to share any questions you may have after watching this presentation so we can be prepared for the questions that you might have. Then the high school counselors will be returning to Pete February 16th and Holmes on February 17th and virtual students on February 18th to have students enter their courses in PowerSchool 
from their course registration sheet, which must include parent signature. So between now and February 16, students will have time to fill out their sheet, return it to the junior high counselors, and making sure again that it does have a parent signature on it. And then we, they, those classes will be entered in PowerSchool. Hopefully we will also be planning a day in April for the ninth graders to hope, come to the high school for tours and more transition activities. The last two slides I'm going to share have to do with Cedar Falls High School graduation requirements. You are all familiar with these requirements and we are going to give you more specific information throughout the presentation. Overall, students need 45 credits with specific requirements in each department. At the high school, counselors will work very closely with students to make sure graduation requirements are being met. To find out more about core, core requirements, we will now hear from Mrs. Deacon. Hi, I'm Mrs. Deacon. And again, I serve students with the last name S through Z. So let's find out what those course requirements are for 10th grade. The high school has a lot to offer, but we know there are some core requirements that all sophomores need to take. Many of the high school courses have an honors level. So as we discover the options, please know that honors has higher rigor, in-depth workload, and will need approval on the course sheet. These are usually a preparation for advanced placement courses, which are weighted higher and really balance is key for 10th graders starting high school. In English, students will either take a semester of English 10A and 10B or the year long course of honors English. Again, this is an honors level that will need approval. All students will take a math course. Grade level is probably geometry, which we have three levels of. In addition, this flow chart of math courses will indicate which math course a student will move on to next. Most sophomores will be in either geometry or algebra two. For social studies, sophomores take a semester of US history and either world geography or global issues, or they can choose to take AP human geography, which is an opportunity for students to experience the upper level rigor of advanced placement course. Students who take AP Human Geography often will also opt to take AP US History in 11th grade. In science, 10th graders will take biology. This is a year long course and we have three options of levels for biology based on student need. If a ninth grader is currently taking honors biology, they can move into honors chemistry for 10th grade. We have three options in our language department, and a reminder, these are not a requirement for graduation, but they are important for college planning. Students can start a language at level one in 10th grade, or they will continue on in the next level accordingly. Financial literacy is a graduation requirement. This is a course that students will take either in 11th or 12th grade for one semester. It also has an online option. This requirement was previously personal economics. Now, Mrs. Gardner will now take us through more options. Hi guys, I'm Mrs. Gardner. I am here to talk to you guys about sophomore PE, health and electives. So sophomores are required to take PE at least one semester of PE. Um, PE is offered on rotating days. So you would either have it on A day or B day. So for example, if it was Monday, Wednesday, Friday, one week, Tuesday, Thursday, the next week. Um, also required to take health Health is also at every other day, one semester class. S sophomores will have to take PE both semesters unless they are exempt, which we will talk about in a little bit. But that is how PE works. There are several PE choices. Um, for our students who have a full schedule of academics, there is a choice of early bird PE because again, you do have to fit it in at least one semester. Early bird starts at 7, 10 in the morning. Um, with early bird PE, you don't necessarily have options that I'm going to discuss later. It's just your PE, you wake up, you go, and you get it done. 
Um, other options for that students can choose for their semester PE are team sports, which is just at a just as it sounds, team oriented. So basketball, volleyball, they play dodgeball, anything that is a team sport, they would participate during that PE. They can choose individual sports. Individual sports is, um, again, as it sounds, anything you can do by yourself within a PE class. So they go on bike rides, they um, do archery, they might go for a walk or go for a run, things they can do by themselves in PE class. Fitness takes it to a different level. Fitness has yoga in it. It might have some CrossFit, some HIIT training in it. A lot of different options within that fitness class. Strength and conditioning is a class that's offered a weightlifting class. Um, every other day, weightlifting class for our sophomores. And then there's basic strength training. Basic strength training is a PE um, that if you are in a sport, your coach has probably talked to you about. This PE does meet every single day, so you do get a full credit. The other PEs are half a credit. This one, because it does meet every day, is a full credit PE. Health, as I said, is required course for all our students to take, usually as a sophomore. Health is a half a credit and every other day, which I spoke of earlier. Um, most students do take this opposite of a PE. However, if they might be exempt from a PE for a semester, they could do this opposite of a study hall. If there is no room for health in their schedule, we do have an online option. This online option for health does not have a certain time when they meet, not like early bird. It is just an online class and they work on it on their own. So the awesome thing about being a student at Cedar Falls High School is you, there are tons of options for our classes, our electives, which is great because we encourage our students to use this time to start exploring different career paths, whether it be in art and business and engineering to take our CAPS um, courses, industrial tech, journalism, music, so orchestra, band, choir. Um, as Ms. Lingen talked about earlier in the presentation, there is that um, slide with course information go there, look at those things that those teachers have put out, the information, read about the classes, watch the videos, find out what you would be interested in, or your student, have your help your student find out what they would be interested in taking. And those are classes to start exploring now to see if maybe that's something they would want to do after high school. When we walk into the junior high, this is the, um, form they are going to be filling out. We will help them. We will walk them through this form to help them pick their classes, their English, their math. Um, we'll talk to them about if they are um, able to get that exemption, which we'll talk about in a second, um, to add their PE, their band, their language classes, everything like that. They will then fill this out, bring it home, go over it with you, have you sign it, and then they will bring it back into the counseling office and we will share the date of when that is due with your student. Exemption. So this is what a student, I get many questions about, can I be exempt for this? Um, I'm in a club sport. Can I be exempt for that? Unfortunately not. Um, it does have to be a school sanctioned sport. So if you look below, first semester exemptions are listed. So if you're in football, cross country, volleyball, women's swimming, men's varsity golf, those things you could be exempt for first semester. And then it goes into second semester. The sports you could be exempt for second semester. Um, as you see, marching band is in that first semester exemption. So if your student is in marching band, they could be exempt from PE. Another way students can be exempt from PE is if they have a full academic schedule for one of those semesters. So if they have no room for PE, they could not take PE for that semester. But again, they need to make sure they take it the other semester. And again, if they don't have room the other semester, then that is when they would do that early bird class. Having a backup plan. So this is important when we're going through schedules. Um, sometimes, not necessarily as sophomores, but it could happen. We can't fit a class in because of just where the classes are offered. So we like students to pick two to three alternates to put on their schedule. So if I'm working on this in June and I can't just grab a student to say, hey, what would you like instead of this? We have those alternatives there. So if they can't get the first choice, they can get a class that they would really enjoy taking. Hi everybody, Mr. Eisman here. 
The next set of slides include numerous resources and information that will help you find success during the next few years of high school. One of the best sources of information is going to be the Cedar Falls High School Counseling website. On this website, you will find information that ranges from course selection to financial aid and scholarships. This is an excellent website for students and parents to bookmark and reference each semester. You're probably familiar with Zello because you've used it to create your four-year plan. Well, Zello is so much more than just a course planner. Students can complete a variety of About Me assessments that help with understanding their unique personality, strengths, and areas of career interest. These assessments help generate a variety of careers, schools, and majors that students can explore. We work with students at least once a semester on these activities and have discussions related to their changing interests. These discussions help students to connect with a variety of opportunities offered through Cedar Falls High School, including job shadows, CAPS programming, college visits, and Hawkeye Concurrent courses. Hawkeye Concurrent courses um, will most likely take place during your junior or senior year. We're sharing this information with you today as you're looking forward and creating your graduation story. Another thing to be aware of is your RAI score. Your Regents Admissions Index is used by our three state schools to determine admission. With the ongoing changes due to COVID-19, this information could change, especially whether or not your ACT is required. However, this information here can help you in planning a successful high school career if any of these three schools are part of your graduation story. The most impactful number of your RAI score will be the number of core courses. The inclusion of the core courses in the RAI score is meant to encourage students to continue taking core courses into their senior year. Although you will most likely have earned the CFHS required credits in math, science, and social studies by the end of your junior year, we still encourage all seniors to take these courses to improve their RAI scores. For some students, their graduation story will include Division I or II athletics. As you're working on your graduation story, make sure to reference the CFHS counseling website linked here for more information on NCAA eligibility. One thing that we will continue to do with all of our students is track their graduation requirements. This sheet is included here as a reference for you if you would like to track these on your own, which is of course encouraged for all students. Class of 2024, what will be your graduation story? When a student is graduating from Cedar Falls High School, one question that is presented to them throughout their senior year revolves around what that student will be doing following graduation day. Unfortunately, being able to answer this question can be somewhat stressful for many 17 and 18 year old young adults. The standard answer can be related to college or getting a job. However, many of the adults that ask this question about their next step in life fail to ask the what and the why to understand their choice. When a student has thought through their graduation story, it is a symbol of preparedness for their future. This story can be rewritten and modified, and it is not written in permanent marker, but rather in pencil. The goal of this is to chart a potential path. In order to build a motivated graduation story, you need to start in the future and work backwards. The process to figure out a career path can be challenging. However, we're here to assist with that. Whether a student knows what they want to do following their educational career or not, exploring different career positions in various industries can be very enlightening. Things to do to have a successful high school career. Talk to teachers, parents, and counselors about what options will best suit you. There are so many activities to engage in, and that full list is on the CFHS website. Remember, GPA is only a piece of the picture for a student. It's okay to take hard classes that might be out of your comfort zone. This is learning that will last longer. For students to be successful in high school, they have to be in school. Supports include power hour time, academic learning, assigned study hall, and our after school learning time. We are here to help. Thank you everyone for attending our virtual class of 2024 meeting. We are excited to be in the junior highs and working with you on planning your next few years of high school. Don't forget, Golden Rule Driving School information will be available at the high school.
Thank you again.